Yes, he is. Oh, but this one isn't a. This one isn't joking. Okay, that's pretty scary. He's putting on some serious lead, that's for sure. Hello everyone, welcome back to another 70 second Vipers video. Today we're going to be doing something, well, a little bit different. I mean, it's kind of the same to be honest, it's, it's a naval shit battle in DCS. By the way, which you guys absolutely loved, thank you to all the people who watched and even didn't watch, you should go check that video out, it was pretty good. Uh, it was Muscova versus Tycho. I have learned that's not how you say it. You say Tycho instead of Tico. So, thank you to whoever that pointed out in the comments. That is greatly appreciated. I look like an absolute baboon saying Tico. So, it's going to be, we last time it was Tycho versus Muscova, yes. Now it's going to be a little different, and if you guys already spotted it, guess what? There's three ships per side. One ship is going to be the really back, it's going to be the carrier Pendy Wind. It's a big cargo ship. And you probably already guessed that these two ships are escorting Handy Wind. This is going to be two Arleigh Bork... Bork? <laughs> two Arleigh Bork class destroyers and two Muscovas. Should be fun. And whichever ship, or whichever I should say, whichever ships or teams, Handy Wind sinks. That's the losing team. So the whole point of these two ships is try to defend their handy wind. So it should be the same. So there's two ships or two um, roles I've assigned. The first one is gonna be these two destroyers, or I should say most part the cruiser. They're going to be going head on at 21, the early Burke's going 21 knots. And the Moskva is actually, I forgot to set it. It's gonna be going 18 knots or 17 knots. There we go. And this one is going to be going 14 knots and it's going to be escorting the handy wind. So this is going to be attacking this one, which is also going to be steaming at 21 knots. These two are going to hopefully clash. Then this one and these are going to escort their handy wind. And the, the handy wind's unarmed, so there should be no shooting between. So all I can say is this is, should be a pretty clean battle. Um, I've never played this match before, so I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah. Let's let's get this thing started. Oh, one thing before I forget. Let's measure the ranges. I know a lot of people were curious. So it's going to be 37 miles between the closest cruisers and destroyer. And then it's going to be from the escort to escort, it's going to be 40 miles. So a little bit longer. Keep in mind, these two are going to be going much faster than the escorting ships. And then from uh, destroyer to uh, handy wind, that's five knots for that side. Now let's go up. Oh, no, I didn't need to do that. So there. It's six miles for there. So five miles, six miles in between the two cruisers. And destroyers it's going to be six miles so six miles all around and for the russians five miles so that's going to should be pretty balanced should be pretty fair they're going to be clashing in the caucasus map um black sea so this should be pretty cool these are going to be the only objects on the map and they're only going to be using their systems to shoot and to defend so this should be pretty interesting so let's fly the mission save it and let's hit start so Game Master, fly. Okay. So here we have the Moskva, chuchin at 20, 19 knots, 20 knots. What a beautiful ship the Moskva is. They should actually start firing on the Arleigh Burke soon because they're within 40 miles. Arleigh Burks are chuchin at, well, they're chuchin. They have really good SM2s. Uh, here we have the other Moskva, chuchin. And then here we have the Russian Handywind, which is going at 14 knots. And here we have her American Handy Wind. Look how much weight she pushes up. It's definitely a lot of resistance on her. So there you go, you have the two ships. 
But my guess is Muscoff is going to start opening fire first due to its due to its longer range missiles. That's what my guess is. And this Arleigh Burke is going. How fast is this other Muscoff going? 20, oh frick, they're both going 27 knots. Um, that's not good. They shouldn't be both going 27 knots. But you know what? I'm okay with that. Even though I don't know if that's fair. If it's if, we'll see what happens. But I don't think it's gonna be a big issue because the Muscova is mostly good for offense. So well, we're really seeing what America versus Russia can do in terms of their naval doctrines and all that. So let's speed up time once more. I'm mostly waiting for the Muscova to open fire first due to its longer range capabilities. At this point in time, they're about, from the closest ship to the closest ship, they're about, ooh, about 32 miles. So they're really gaining on each other, that's for sure. They should have already detected each other on radar by now, but hey, never know. Don't, do not underestimate SM2 missiles. They're really impressive. So if we can just take a second to realize how many radars this one has. Should be opening up on each other soon, but never know if they don't even see each other on radar. But my guess is they should open each other within the next few seconds. Okay, there you go. Must cross tubes are. Did I miss? Oh, there we go. Sandboxes are coming out, baby. What about the other Muskva? Nah, she's chilling. Woken up now. And there you go. There's those SM2s coming out the early Burke. Woo! The SM2s are amazing. That's amazing. What about the other early Burke? No, other early Burke is chilling. Oh, the other Muskva is opening up. That's cool, bro. But I might have. There's cr oh, okay. Both early bricks are opening up SM2s like crazy, bro. They're shooting out SM2s, baby. To intercept those. Bro, they're successfully intercepting those missiles. Bro, like don't don't not underestimate SM2s, bro. At the same time, do not underestimate sandboxes. Those sandboxes will get you. Because they are very fast missiles. But those SM2s just go kaboom. It's crazy how many SM2s the Americans can poop out. Let's go back to Moskva. Which is really having fun with shooting with all its missiles. I think it might have exposed everything. Woo! That's pretty good. You can even see the smoke from the other ships. Both Arleigh Burks are definitely dispatching. Oh, look how much smoke there is. But they both look to be chilling. This cloud definitely opened up. That's pretty impressive. But. Well, look at this Arleigh Burke, which is just opening up and opening up. So you can see some of the sandboxes have actually started targeting the uh, handy wind. But these Arleigh Burks make short work of. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Arleigh Burke starts to make short work of them. Let's see our other Arleigh Burke friend opening up like crazy. That's pretty cool. You can even see both smokes now. I'm not sure what that's for, but I don't know why both, why four SM2s just fired straight up and exploded right above. But oh, there's a whole slew of bro. These <laughs> oh, there's a SM. 
Oh, there's Sea Wiz. Sea Wiz opened up. The sea American Sea Wiz, bro. Don't judge the American Sea Wiz. Bro, that's crazy. Man, like... The Arleigh Burks can defend themselves, man. I'm not, they can't really attack too well, but they can defend themselves. They're really cool escort ships. There's the Sea Wiz. Let's let's watch this. We're watching the Sea Wiz in slow motion. Wow, what a powerhouse, bro. Oh, that one came a little close for comfort. I honestly bet the Arlie Burks captain is having brown pants at this point. That was a lot of all of a sudden. That was pretty cool. Now let's measure the ranges between the two closest ships. Arlie Burke to Arlie Burke. I mean, Arlie Burke to closest Moskva. Only about 20 miles. So they're definitely closing in on each other. I tell you, the Americans have one thing. They have very accurate deck gun. But I might have put the Americans at a slight disadvantage. But I mostly did that just due to the fact that the Americans won't last time. Very high expectations. Oh, both sea wizards have opened up on this grumble. Woo, one of those grumbles will go kaboom. Why do I keep saying grumbles? But at the same time, it's not whoever wins destroyer-wise. It's not whoever, like, I mean, kind of is, but not indirectly. Both destroyers, both early Burks lose. It's both sink, but somehow they somehow damage the Moskva so much that they can't fire. Uh, actually, I really don't know because the handy one can't fire either, so. No, okay. So it looks like that was a temporary fight. And it looks like everything has calmed down. It looks like all the Moskva has fired all their sandboxes. Oh, 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 the Moskva's gun's trained. What about this one's? That one's trained. What about this one's? That one's also trained. What about the Americans? Are their guns trained? Nah, the Amer- Oh, no, their guns is also trained. We might have a big gunfight going on in a sec. Uh, this Arleigh Burke's gun isn't trained. This Arleigh Burke is okay. I wonder who's gonna start firing first. I believe the Moskva's gonna start firing first just due to its longer gun range however they're a lot more or less accurate okay let's just um advance time a little bit They're definitely closed up on each other. Second Arleigh Burke doesn't have any of its guns trained. It's the first one that does. Well, that's moving at 18 knots, so that's interesting. I'll tell you though, once those 130s start firing, they are pretty scary rounds. Just go boom, 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 boom. They are starting to get a little close to each other, though. Especially this one, early Burke. Four, 14 miles. I highly regret that I didn't put both of them at the same speed. Because now, the second one, or the one on the right, or the left, technically. Or the one on the right of the Handy Wind is a much bigger disadvantage. Or actually, it's a bigger advantage just because it's not in the line of fire. But at the same time, it can't support its other early Burke, which is attempting to deal two Muskvas at once. However, the Moskva's main weapon was those sandboxes, and it's 130s. And their 130s are very strong, but they're kind of inaccurate. 
And if they can even sink one Arlie Burke, the Musquaz are pretty much shot all their ammo probably by then, and the ne the second Arlie Burke, the escorting one, can just finish off both of them. That is at least what I guess. I'm not sure. But I have a big feeling that this Arlie Burke's about to sink. But who knows? So let's increase time again. They're about 18 miles, 16 miles out. First, but not uh, aimed. And this one is firing. Doing a very slow fire, that's odd. He just fired a few rounds at the other early bark. Oh, but this one isn't a f this one isn't joking. Oh, the Arlick Burke is shredding, bro. I, I, you know, as much as I like the Muscova, it's hardly. Oh, there's the second Muscova about to open fire. Oh, they're within horizon, or I suppose they're pretty close to each other. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Oh, bro, that's pretty scary. He's putting on some serious lead, that's for sure. The rounds. Oh, there you go. There's Arlie Burke's rounds coming in. What about this one? Uh, he's also firing. Oh, look. His gun stopped for a second. Oh, uh, but this one's getting hit. Like, the Arlie Burke. Okay, Muscova's rounds are starting to come in. He didn't get any more. Probably reloading. And he did put some serious... Oh, that was a drunk hit. He did put some serious lead downrange, but... Let's see how the other early bro oh he's definitely got hit. Ooh, ooh. He's not having a good day. But he, nonetheless, he's still firing. He's still firing. He's not having a good day, and he might have been lost in war, but he's firing nonetheless. And he's putting lead down range. Other early burke is just chilling. He's putting some lead down range. Arlie Burke hasn't stopped firing though. That gun is still going. His shots have been wildly inaccurate though. Could be because he's damaged. Could be. I, but I don't think he's sinking yet. I just think he's been that damaged to say the least. Other Arlie Burke though is just chilling. Didn't go too well for this guy. Especially when the light ranges are still starting to go down that way. Ooh, that was a big hit. Yeah, this one's considered gone. Escorting Garly Burke, though, is trained its gun, or, but hasn't fired yet. But essentially, sort of speak, I mean, this has been hit. But so to speak, the Moskva is pretty much done offensive capabilities. It's, it's pretty much expended all its missiles, expended everything. Only thing left of the Moskva is essentially its Siwas, which are these two missiles, and if missiles get fired at it, it has these grumbles at the back. But I don't think the our, uh, our Harley Burt contains any any missiles or, or harpoons, I should say. Yeah, both handy winds are good. I mean, they haven't really been targeted, so. Yeah, this is this ship isn't sinking. I mean, it's no battle condition, but it's not sinking. It's definitely 
having troubles at the moment, but not sinking. Okay, let's see how... Yeah, this must watch just at this point, just going close in at this point after he... Oh, there's... Oh, now he's pretty much broadside to the... Arley Burke. Yeah, this Arley Burke is pretty much screwed. Both Moskvas at this point are pretty much going broadside up on each other. Uh, so I guess there's nothing more to the end, just speed up time. Second Arleigh Burke looks- Oh, the second Arleigh Burke's putting some lead down range, finally. There you go, now the Musquaz are starting to become screwed. Oh, and he stopped. Well, that, well, I guess his gun overheated, to say the least. His round should start coming in any second. What does Arleigh Burke? Is he firing again? Oh, there you go. Now he put more lead down range. And he stopped again. Oh, there you go. Now he's putting more lead down range. I don't know how accurate these shots are if they're going up and down. Oh, he might be targeting two ships. So, big feeling he's targeting one must cloud and switching to the next one and targeting the other one. That's, that's probably why his barrel's going up and down. Let's get a slow motion shot of this gunfire. You even need to see the bullet. Lead. Okay, my squad's definitely getting shot at. He is turning. He was pretty close. I think other Muskva might, yeah. Other Muskva reached the end of his waypoint. Speed up time, I guess. I highly doubt these are the most accurate shots I've ever. Oh, there you go. That's one hit. There's another hit. I mean, like, it hits the Muscova, but, like, it's a Muscova very armored. Wait, what just fired? Wait, did Muscova fire something? Or did they get hit? I'm so confused. Arley Burke might be out of ammo. Okay, let's keep it going. Let's see what happens close in, but I think the winds have to maybe go to the Moskva. Or the Russians, but let's see. Arley Burke's really closing in. Other Moskva has officially stopped for the day. Ran out of coal, probably. Or it just could have been that, um... That's a beautiful turn that the Moskva does. It's beautiful. Sorry for the spamming of the keyboard. Both Arleigh Burks are starting to close in. They're both out of ammo. Our second Arleigh Burke did absolute jaggedy crap. This one's still on fire. So, yeah, this battle's kind of going to a shit show. Shit show. One Musquaz on fire, or one Arleigh Burke's on fire, still floating. One uh, Arleigh Burke is officially out of ammo and did less damage than a porcupine on a piece of grass. And both Musquaz are out of ammo, and this one's circling it hopelessly. I guess this is the Battle of the Sea Wiz? Actually, no. Oh, frick, this is getting interesting. The Musquaz stopped directly on the Arleigh Burke's path. Oh, this might be a big sea with war. Oh, but, oh, oh, frick. This might be an issue for them. Rush. Oh. 
If the Russians can destroy... Oh, this is really good now. Oh, frick, but this one... Oh, okay, this is probably... Th this battle just got a lot more intense, bro. This one might be a draw, but honestly, I don't know. So. Second Arleigh Burke is still on fire. And not doing anything but being on fire. This one is gonna do stuff, that's for sure. This one should do a hard turn any second. At the same time, though, I think the Reds might win because I just screwed us over in the route planning. But this one's doing a turn. Going directly for the second Moskva, which is parked. So this is going to be interesting. This one's carrying on as useless as always. See whiz. Not working. Expected. I don't think it would work. Going directly for the Moscow, I might even call- Oh, frick! Oh, frick, bro! Moscow is firing Sea Whiz! Grant's not doing much damage. I mean, there's three of pixels. Where's the, where's the American Sea Whiz? Oh, there's the American Sea Whiz. I don't think I really did this battle correctly. If the Arleigh Burke can pass the Muscova, broadside, which I don't think it can because it's getting absolutely battered. Yep, I freaked this over. I think the Russians, and you know, I can't believe I said this, but the Russians might win. And I think they did win. Speed up time once more. Wait, did that... Oh, that's not good. Second Arleigh Burke sunk. It went under. Oh, frick. It's the one that's still on fire. Yeah, but the Henny wins fate is coming. Unless the Russians run out of sea with his ammo, which I highly doubt. See a beautiful enemy tanker coming right at them. That's what it sees. Are the Russians take away? Oh, the Russians are the Americans might have shot one of their seaways out. But does it have ammo? It's a question. 2.3 miles. 0.2 miles. No one's firing yet. I highly... Oh. Oh. They definitely did fire. That's so cool how the sound effects like so delayed. Yep. What about this one? Is this sea was about to fire? How just okay. I think we know the answer to how this battle went is going to go.
Bro, like, you can't beat that, though. There's two Musclaws parked at the most literal. They're literally no more than a mile away. And they're just shredding the handy wind. Like, there's two Musclaws literally just parked right next to each other. Of course they're gonna win. And handy wind. Uh, let's watch it go under. Good, good, I'm under the water. Wait, is it gonna go under? Or did the Russians run out of ammo and they can't finish it off? Well, they definitely ran out of ammo. But is it gonna even sink? Charlie Burks being as useless as always because their damage control crew can't even put out a fire. Wait, where's the Musclaw's second here? Oh, there it goes. And, oh, frick. That was pretty fast. Uh, just cut, get a kaboom. And Handy Wind is down. And I officially say, anyone's under, the Russians have won. By their sheer power and armor and the bias that I gave them in the route planning. And I didn't give them any bias, I just meant to do something that I wasn't supposed to do. But, let's say though, this Arleigh Burke hasn't sunk. It's been cruising at eight knots for the past five years. And the fire's still burning. I have no idea how it's not. So, on this terrible, well, not terrible, on this happy, pretty happy, not for the Americans, for the Russians, but still, nonetheless, on this interesting ending, I would like to thank everyone for watching this a very scientific, very unbiased video. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. And leave me a doubt in the comment section. What ships do you want me to fight against? Or what types of ships? Or what combination? I will see you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. And goodbye. Man, is this early break not going to sink? Wow, that's good.